Welcome to another video feature on the Crux YouTube site. I am John Allen, the editor of Crux. Uh, today's special segment is brought to you by the good people at the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, their Secretariat for Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs, and their Commemorate the Reformation campaign. Remember that 2017, uh, and more specifically, October 31st, uh, marks the 500th anniversary uh, of the Protestant Reformation. And, and perhaps the unique feature uh, about this, uh, this anniversary and this commemoration of that anniversary uh, is that very explicitly and intentionally, uh, it's being done together, both by Protestants and by Catholics. Uh, and to discuss why that is so and what it might mean for the future of ecumenical relations, we are joined by two of the country's leading experts. Uh, we have Susan Wood, Dr. Susan Wood, who is a member of the Sisters of Charity in Leavenworth, Kansas. She is an academic expert on ecclesiology. She's written extensively on De Lubac. For, for instance, and she is also a long-standing veteran uh, of ecumenical dialogues, including the U.S. Lutheran Catholic dialogue. We also have with us uh, uh, Catherine Johnson of the Evangelical Lutheran Church of America. She is their uh, director of ecumenical and interreligious affairs. She uh, is also a expert on historical theology, former member of the faculty at Louisville Presbyterian Theological Seminary. Uh, both of them distinguish experts in this area. Susan, Catherine, thank you both for being with us today. Thanks, John. Thank you. So let me ask each of you from your own perspectives. I mean, in, in the popular mind, in the court of popular opinion, the Protestant Reformation was about separating Protestants and Catholics. And, and for just ordinary people, it could seem odd that 500 years later, uh, we are cel or not celebrating very deliberately, that word uh, is, is not being used, but we are commemorating uh, this anniversary together. From each of your perspectives, why is it important that we do this together? I can start with you. I think Lutherans would want to say clearly that Luther's intention was not separation. It was reform and separation came. So this has been a, a side effect that we have lived with and become overly comfortable with over the last 500 years. It was important for Lutherans in approaching this anniversary that this not be another time to pour salt in the wounds of division. And I think the line that is was used in the Lund service where Pope Francis and Lutheran leaders began the this anniversary year on October 31st last year is an important summary of how we felt that Lutheran Christians, as they remember the events that led to the particular formation of their churches, do not want to do so without their Catholic fellow Christians. There was a yearning not to perpetuate this separation. And Catherine? Um, Susan. Um, oh, Susan, sorry, we just heard from Catherine. Well, each commemoration has its own historical context. And the fact is, is that Catholics have been involved in ecumenical dialogue with Lutherans for 50 years since the close of Vatican II. And one, what many Catholics don't understand is that one of the purposes of Vatican II was unity with other Christians. So that the first document to come out of that council was the decree on the liturgy, the first paragraph in the first document mentions Christian unity. So um, it's important to commemorate this because we've been working 50 years to achieve this unity and we uh, need to heal those divisions of the past. So I'm sure both probably agree that as recently 100 years ago, uh, the idea of commemorating an anniversary of the Protestant Reformation together would have been virtually unthinkable, or at the, at the very least, if it happened someplace, it would have been seen as terribly avant-garde. Uh, what do you think has changed in each uh, of the traditions involved here, that it is on the Lutheran side and on the Catholic side? Uh, to make a joint commitment possible. And, and perhaps, Susan, this time we can begin with you. 
Well, before Vatican II, we had, in, in the Catholic world, there was this notion of return ecumenism, which wasn't really ecumenism at all. It was, you know, Protestants are in error, therefore they should come home to Rome. Um, and this is what changed with the Second Vatican Council, that we recognize elements of the Church of Christ in our separated sisters. We've been involved in a spiritual ecumenism of... Um, of reconciliation. Um, we've learned new humility as a church. We're less triumphalistic than we used to be. Uh, hopefully. Um, and so these are all reasons you know, that we've changed, I think, in our attitudes toward other Christians. And Catherine? This was mirrored in Lutheran changes also. Vatican II also was an important event for Lutherans in changing our, the tone of our relationship with Catholics. And without that, we would not have had the 50 years of dialogue that at international levels and at national levels in places like the United States and Germany and Scandinavia, Brazil, have changed the, the way in which we present ourselves to each other. I think also there has been a common legacy of scholarship that had started already before Vatican II. The liturgical movement was a common influence on our churches, and that has brought us much closer together in much of our weekly experience of our Christian life. And this has allowed us to, as Susan said, take, um, take the fruits of spiritual ecumenism in our changed relationships and friendships. We can't forget also what happened in 1999, which was the signing of, by officials of both of our churches of the Joint Declaration on the Doctrine of Justification. For Catholics, this is the first official reception of the results of dialogue uh, with churches issuing from the Reformation. For Lutherans, um, justification is the criterion by which all other doctrines are judged. For Catholics, you know, I tell students that, you know, the word justification doesn't drip from our lips very frequently because it's a foreign term. We speak, we tend to speak more of sanctification than justification. But nevertheless, this was a, a breakthrough that Catholics, I think, don't appreciate enough in our relationships. And this means that all agreements past that 19, 1999 are based on that agreement. Um, and that affects how we celebrate this, um, this time together. I think for Lutherans, uh, now, that offers a couple you. of... Can sorry, sorry, Catherine, go ahead. I, I'd just like to say something to Susan's point. Um, the Joint Declaration had a couple of significant advances. One was that for Lutherans, this was huge. On our key point from the Reformation, the, we were saying that we no longer needed to condemn the Catholic practice and teaching that we see, and that was an enormously important advance. It also gave us a framework within, within which we could honor and appreciate our differences in piety and vocabulary that Susan was talking about. So Catholics don't need to make justification their own favorite term for this no longer to be divisive between us. I think we also... Go ahead. I think we also um, need to look at what's happening with grassroots ecumenism, not just from the official churches, but from the people. Um, last summer, I was privileged to attend um, the ELCA churchwide assembly, where they confirmed the document um, declaration on the way with a 99.4% approval, which was enormous. We had a listening session the night before expecting lots of doctrinal questions. Instead, we received, people were lined up at the microphone giving testimonies of how they had worked together in parishes, in social justice concerns, and um, in what their experience was in ecumenical marriages. Okay. So there is a thirst on, on behalf of people, the common people in the pew, that the churches kind of get on with, 
get on with this work of ecumenism and achieve unity for which they yearn. I mean, that it was an overwhelming. Right. Susan, uh, Susan, you just mentioned the common person in the pew. Fortunately, we're almost out of time, but I want to end on this question. Can each of you give us one concrete practical result from the joint commemoration anniversary of the Protestant Reformation that you think the ordinary church-going Catholic or Lutheran would actually notice? That is not some breathtaking new declaration, it isn't papal symbolism, as helpful as those things are but something practical in the trenches that each of you would hope might come out of this year. Um, perhaps, Catherine, I can start with you. What Susan mentioned from our church-wide assembly was something of a surprise to us Lutherans also. The depth of yearning that people expressed in our, our decision-making body, which is 60% lay people, caught us by surprise. People want us to move forward on this because it comes into their daily lives. And this anniversary year has lifted up this Catholic Lutheran relationship with special intensity. We have almost all of our synods. I, I haven't, I don't know of a, of a synod in the Lutheran church that has not had local ecumenical commemoration of this anniversary with their Catholic neighbors. And this has happened at many parish levels where people write to me about their new Catholic friends, or they understand this differently, or this is a practice that they want to continue in their neighborhood work with immigrants uh, to make this a common witness. I think the visibility of this anniversary offered us an opportunity to say, we are not where we were, and we do not want to stay where we are. We want to go forward. And the depth of yes from our people, I think, astounded us. Before this, commemoration, before this commemoration, people used to speak of a ecumenical winter. You know, it was like it's dead on the rocks. And what has happened is I think this commemoration has moved us into a springtime where people care about Lutheran Catholic relationships. Um, and I, this is affecting people because every diocese is having some kind of commem commemoration together, as Catherine said. And this is putting uh, ec ec ecumenism back on the map in a way that it wasn't before for ordinary folks. Well, listen, I, I wish I could keep talking to the rest of the two of you for the rest of the day. I mean, what I feel like is we are getting a graduate level seminar in ecumenism that most people have to pay real money uh, to have. Uh, so thank you both for sharing your, your wisdom and your expertise with us uh, here today. Catherine, thank you. Thank you very much. And Susan, thank you. Thank you, John. So this has been another special video feature from Crux. This one brought to us by the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, its Secretariat for Ecumenical and Interreligious Affairs, and the Commemorate the Reformation campaign. Stay with us on the Crux YouTube site because we will continue to have more of these features. Um, but uh, until we hook up again, you have a great day. I'm John Allen for Crux.